Hi there. It's April 16th and time for Proverbs 16. We're still using the Living Bible for this month. If nothing else, just to point out all the, the words they got wrong that I don't agree with. You may agree with them, but I, I don't. And I will back it up with this New American Standard right here. <clears throat> which is a, one of the more accurate word-for-word -word translations. So. Okay, verse 1. We can make our plans, but the final outcome is in God's hands. That's true. That's nothing changed in there. Make all the plans you want. God's going to have his way. Two, we can always prove that we are right, but it is the, but is the Lord convinced? That's interesting. All the ways of a person are clean in his own sight, but the Lord examines the motives. Clean in his own sight. It says prove in quotes. Prove. Interesting, huh? There's a very sensible verse. Huh? Commit your work to the Lord, then it will succeed. Hmm? Very close. Commit your work to the Lord, and all your plans will be established. All right. Doesn't say they'll succeed over here. It says your plans will be established. Hmm? For the Lord has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked, for punishment. Yeah, didn't change that much. Five, pride disgusts the Lord. Take my word for it. Proud men shall be punished. Take my word for it. Did Solomon say that? Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Okay. Proud, conceited, think you know it all. Abomination, that's a heavy word. Huh? And disgust is pretty close. It doesn't say problem it shall be punished. That's why it's in italics they added that. Hmm. Six. Iniquity is atoned for by mercy and truth. Evil is avoided by reverence for God. It's gonna say fear of the Lord over here. By mercy and truth, atonement is made for wrongdoing, and by the fear of the Lord one keeps away from evil. Right. Hmm. Mercy and truth. Atonement is made for wrongdoing. Hmm. When a man is trying to please God, God makes even his worst enemies to be at peace with him. When a person's trying to when a person's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he even causes his enemies to make peace with him. I think that'd be it's tough. Eight. A little gained honesty is better than great wealth gotten by dishonest means. Better is a little with righteousness than great income with injustice. Right? And it says that. Yeah, that's it. do that. We'll highlight that. Nine, we should make plans counting on God to direct us. All right. Now this actually says it better. The, the mind of a person plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Hmm? Oh, that's... I like this just so we have something to talk about, huh? Ten, God will help the king to judge the people fairly. There need be no mistakes. Hmm. A divine verdict is on the lips of the king. His mouth should not err in judgment. Okay. Eleven, the Lord demands fairness in every business deal. He establishes this principle. Okay. They, they never say but it's all about just balance and scales belong to the Lord. Hmm. And that's, I mean, you could say that that's very generalizing it, you know, it was talking about a just balance and scale. Okay. We're talking about, you know, you're used to getting a, a pound of <clears throat> of flour or a pound of coffee for $10, but now you only get 
12 or 13 ounces of flour or coffee for $10. Those are not just scales. Okay, they put it in a bigger package, give you a smaller amount, and they're charging you the same or more for it. Okay. And it says all over there that that is an abomination to the Lord. Twelve, it is a horrible thing for a king to do evil. His right to rule depends on his fairness. It's an abomination for kings to commit wicked acts. We don't have kings, we have representatives. and But the head representative is, I mean... They have a lot of, not as much power as a king, but they have like a king, but a lot of people don't like him. Huh? 13, the king rejoices when his people are truthful and fair, right? 14, the anger of the king is a messenger of death and a wise man will appease it. <laughs> don't make the king angry. <clears throat> okay. 15, many favors are showered on those who please the king. Hmm. Okay. We don't have kings, so. 16. How much better is wisdom than gold and understanding than silver? That's huge, you know. That's a huge one right there. And it probably says it better over here. How much better it is to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding to be chosen above silver? Okay. Wisdom is more important than money. Okay. With wisdom, money will come automatically. 17. The path of the godly leads away from evil. He who follows that path is safe. Okay? That's a, that's a good paraphrase. Okay? 18. Pride goes before destruction, haughtiness before a fall. Your okay, grandma used to say that, huh? Pride goeth before a fall. Okay? Pride goes before fall. Mm -hmm. If you're prideful, arrogant, conceited, haughty, <laughs> you're going to fall. Humble. The key is to be humble. 19. There you go. Better poor and humble than proud and rich. Right. Absolutely. Can't say it better than that. It is better to be humble in spirit with the needy than to divide the spoils with the proud. Right. <clears throat> the Lord loves humble people. Okay. Man, I gotta. Twenty. God blesses those who obey Him. Happy the man who puts his trust in the Lord. Happy the man. One who pays attention to the word will find good, and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. All right. That's a good one. 21. The wise man is known by his common sense, and a pleasant teacher is the best. All right. Now this says the wise in heart will be called understanding, and sweetness of speech increases persuasiveness. Huh. Lips. Learning. Learning. Well, they turn learning into teachers, so. Okay, we'll leave that alone. 22. Wisdom is a fountain of life to those possessing it, but a fool's burden is his folly or foolishness. Right. 23. From a wise mind comes careful and persuasive speech. All right. The heart of the wise instructs his mouth. That's good. That's like, think before you act, right? 24, kind words are like honey, enjoyable and healthful. All right. Sweet to the soul and healing to the bones, All right? Kind words are always best. Always be kind. 25. Before every man there lies a wide and pleasant road. He thinks is right, but it ends in death. All right. It's always the narrow path, right? There's a way which seems right to a person, but it ends. But its end is the way of death. 
it doesn't say wide and pleasant road it says a road that seems right that's where you pray I mean ask the Lord which way to go 25 before okay we just read that 26 hunger is good it makes you work to satisfy it all right this hunger urges him on all right good one. 27 <laughs> oh how many grandmas said this idle hands are the devil's workshop idle lips are his mouthpiece a worthless person digs up evil while his words are like a scorching fire. Hmm? 28. An evil man sows strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. And when you spread gossip, separating friends, and it says you're evil. Okay? People that spread gossip are evil. The Lord hates gossip. Okay. And mostly because it goes on among the church brethren. Gossip constantly. You need to stop that. 29. Wickedness loves company and leads others into sin. Right. Person of violence incites his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. 30. The wicked man stares into space with pursed lips, deep in thought, planning his evil deeds. Wow. He who thinks, he who winks his eye and does so to devise perverse things, he who compresses his lips brings evil to pass. Okay, and it doesn't, staring into space, okay, that, that's not what this means. Okay, that's, um, it says, winks his eye and does so to devise perverse things planning evil winking the eye nodding the head okay you have two friends here and some unsuspecting person comes along and you're going to take advantage of him right and the other person knows you're going to take advantage of him by selling him a faulty thing or conning him out of money you're going to look to your friend and you're going to wink your eye and nod your head watch me get this guy okay that's what they're talking about it's not staring into space okay so that one is wrong okay okay 31 white hair is a crown of glory and is seen most among the godly a gray head is a crown of glory it is found in the way of righteousness hmm well yeah we could say that I guess you remember when um when Moses came down off the mountain after after meeting God, his hair was white. His hair had turned white. Okay. And when John saw Jesus in heaven, Jesus' his hair and his beard were white. So, is your hair turned white if you're the more godly you are? I think the more time you spend, the older you get, you know. Does this mean I'm wise? Well, I'd like to think so, but it just means I've got a lot of experience more than anything else. So. 32. It is better to be slow-tempered than famous. It is better to have self-control than to control an army. Right. One who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. One who rules his spirit than one who captures a city. Yeah. And that's a verse a lot of us need to dwell on. It is better to be slow-tempered than famous and better to have self-control than to control an army or a captured city. It says over here. Hmm? And 33. We toss the coin, but the Lord controls its decision. The lot is cast into the lap, but every decision is from the Lord. So, there you have it. That's Proverbs 16 for April 16th. We'll go over our highlights real quick. Three, basic. Commit your work to the Lord and you will succeed. Or your plans will be established. Hmm? There you go. We highlighted eight. 
A little gained honesty is better than great wealth gotten by dishonest means. That's kind of turned around, but better is a little with righteousness than great income with injustice. Right. Sleep better at night. Nine, so we should make plans counting on God to direct us. The mind of a person plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Okay. It doesn't say we should make plans. It says you're going to make plans, okay? The mind of a person plans his way. You're going to make plans, but the Lord's going to direct your steps. Okay. It doesn't say you should make plans. It says, it says you're going to, okay? The mind of a person plans his way. Hmm? And everybody's got dreams and plans. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You know? So that people that God willing... Which is a good thing to say. Yeah. Highlighted 11. The Lord demands fairness in every business deal. He establishes his principle. Now there are talks all over. He always, Solomon always uses the, <clears throat> the balance, the scales. Okay. Everything back then was done by scales. They weighed everything. Okay. They weighed cloth. They weighed wheat. They weighed milk. They weighed everything. And that's how they sold it. By weight. And people used to cheat on their scales. You know, you could, it just takes a very small weight or magnet on the one side to make the scales tip in your favor, to make it look like something weighs more than it actually does so you can get more money and sell less product, okay? That's, and it was prevalent back then, and it was prevalent in the Middle Ages, okay? The King of England the people were complaining that the bakers were cheating them on their scales. And it got so bad that the king made a decree that said any baker caught cheating on his scales would immediately be executed. Okay? Executed. They would drag him out of the street and execute him. This scared the bakers so much that they started giving extra. Okay? And back then, everybody used the imperial system. There was no metrics back then, so they got a dozen. If you bought a dozen of anything, they gave you an extra one, okay? Because they didn't want to, they didn't even want to be accused of cheating on their scales. They were so scared, so they gave you an extra one. That's where the term baker's dozen came from. A baker's dozen is 13. It's one extra one to make sure the weight was right. Oh, that's today's history lesson. You like that? Okay, talking about scales. 16. How much better is wisdom than gold and understanding than silver? Right. How much? He says, how much better is to get wisdom than gold? Right. Wisdom is more important. With wisdom, all this comes. Okay. 18. We highlighted pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Right. Pride. People that are prideful fall twice as hard. If you're humble, keep your mouth shut. You're not going to fall. You know, other people will build you up. Why? Better poor and humble than proud and rich. That's very simple. Humble in spirit with the needy than to divide the spoils with the proud. See, now this actually kind of said it is better to be around. Okay. It is better to be around the needy and humble in spirit than it is to be around and divide spoils with the proud. Okay. Better hanging around humble people. Very, pretty straightforward. 23, from a wise mind comes careful and persuasive speech. Okay. The white of the heart instructs his mouth. All right. If you're wise, you will be very careful in your speech. First off, it's best not to speak. But if you do, speak slowly and clearly, carefully. Kind words are like honey, and joy, enjoyable and helpful. Right. Sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. I like that better. Kind words. Remember that. Kind words. Hmm? 28. An evil man sows strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. Hmm? Gossip separates 
the best of friends. Okay? Your best friend tells you something in secret. I need prayer for this. And you go and tell somebody else, even meaning well, oh, we need to pray for, we need to pray for so and so. She's having a problem in this area. And this person doesn't know that it was a secret. Oh, so pretty soon, 10 people know about it. And then some stranger's going to come up to your best friend and say, oh, I heard you needed prayer for so-and-so. I hope you feel better. And then she's going to be mortified. And then suddenly, in her mind, she goes, I only told my best friend this in confidence. And now everybody knows it. You're a gossip. Okay? And you just lost your best friend. Remember that. A gossip... Satan uses gossip for everything. You may be addicted to gossip and you don't even know because gossip is addictive. Okay? Everything on TV. Most stuff on the news. Here's a story. So-and-so did such and such and it's somebody you never heard about. Okay? You need to know what's going on in your government with your rulers and your representatives. But, you know, what so-and-so did in another city, in another town, that's none of your business, okay? That's gossip. Reality TV is gossip. You're getting in on somebody else's drama that has nothing to do with you, and it's gossip, okay? It's addictive. And all this stuff makes everything you hear in church about your friends, makes it seem okay. Well, it's all over TV. It's what everybody does. It's not what everybody does, and God hates it. So remember that. Gossip is a big, that's one of my soapboxes, you might say. Hmm. At 30, this is one of those things we found that, that was wrong in the paraphrase. Okay, The wicked man stares into space and per, with pursed lips, deep in thought, planning his evil deeds. No, he who winks his eye and does so to devise perverse things. He who compresses his lips brings evil to pass. Okay. A person who plans an evil deed, who plans to con somebody out of their money or take advantage of somebody, okay, that's perverse, okay, and that's evil. He brings evil to pass, okay, so that's, you know, just another reason to have a parallel if you're reading a paraphrase. Okay, 31, white hair is a crown of glory and is seen most among the godly. A gray head is a crown of glory. It is found in the way of righteousness. Hmm. I don't know about godly righteousness, but I mean, everybody gets gray hair, you know, if they're old enough. And they're not all godly, okay? Okay, 32. It is better to be slow tempered than famous, it is better to have self control than to control an army. One who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. One who rules his spirit is better than one who captures a city. Right. Slow-tempered, self-control. Okay, that's important. Now, do I have that? Not always. Okay. Never, nobody's righteous, nobody's perfect, but, you know, you pray about this stuff. And we'll try to be that way. So there you have it. That's Proverbs 16 for April 16th. We're halfway through the month now. So there you have it. Stay tuned later today for the Bible in one year. We're getting back into Samuel today. And, and I think Samuel actually dies today. And pretty soon David's going to be the king. But we'll see what happens. Give us a like if you think about it. Catch someone in the EMS. Till later. Be humble. See ya.